Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Before I start, I would like to congratulate us and I would like to say thank you to all of you. We just reached a new milestone. We reached 50,000 subscribers. Thank you, thank you so much. So for today's video, I will be showing you how you can make your own aesthetic PowerPoint. But before you jump right into it, I would like to share this first. It is Wondershare eDraw Max. EDRAW Max is a diagramming software that includes diagrams, templates, and symbols widely used in business, education, software development. It has various useful features that will significantly help you, especially if you're a student like me. We have there a lot of templates you can choose from. And one of the key features of this software is that it is a cross-platform supported software. EDRAW Max offers complete flexibility with a selection of platforms available to download and use directly. It is available for Windows, Mac OS, Linux, and online. By the way, I have the link below in the description box if you want to check this out. Another feature is that it has ready-to-use templates. There are built-in templates where EDRAW Max provides a workspace for creating over 280 types of diagrams, including flowcharts, fishbone diagrams, UML diagrams, floor plans, and more. There are 2,000 plus professional templates and 26,000 plus built-in symbols. It is also a user-generated template wherein you can also share your diagram or template and help other e-drawers in the template community. It is both available in online and in desktop. The last feature that I will share with you is its superior file compatibility. You can save and export your work to different file types including Visio, MS Office, PowerPoint, Excel, PDF, JPG, SVG, and etc. You can also collaborate with other diagram making tool users. If you're interested in using the software, I have a link below in the description box. They also have the eDraw Back to School campaign on which it has two options. If you're not a student or teacher, you can get up to 65% off if you will buy a subscription. For option two, if you're a student or a teacher, you can check the education price. They offer one month plan starting from $15 for a limited time. But if you don't want yet to pay anything or just want to try it out, you can download eDraw Max for free and just be creative. Again, all the links are below in the description box. And lastly, thank you so much to eDraw Max for sponsoring this video. And yes, that is all for eDraw Max. And without further ado, let's jump right into the video. For the first step in making your aesthetic PowerPoint is to have or to look for a color palette. You can search for some on colorhunt.co and once you picked a palette, you can easily copy the specific colors by clicking on the color code or you can save the palette photo on your device. You can also find some on Pinterest. After that, open PowerPoint, choose the blank presentation and insert the image of the color palette. Insert another slide and here we will start the title page of our presentation. Delete the text box in the slide and then insert here the palette you want. Next is to format the slide's background. Right click on it, click on the eyedropper tool and then choose the color you want from the palette. Next I will add a shape. 
go to the insert tab and here I picked the curve line option and I just made here an irregular shape. So it depends on your theme if what you want to include here. You can add some geometric shapes or leave it as it is if you want to have a minimalist look. To make an irregular shape, click on your slide and then bring your cursor to where you want your curve will appear. Just repeat the process and make sure that both ends will meet so that you can add a fill to that shape. Then change the color. Pick any color on your palette. I will also adjust its transparency. Adjust the color and the thickness of it. Resize them based on your preference. Next, I will be duplicating the first irregular shape I made. I will place it here on the sides and corners of the slide. I will adjust the rotation and size of the shape and here I choose this shade of yellow in the palette. I will also adjust its transparency to have this soft and light effect of the color. Then I will duplicate it so I will just repeat this process until I'm satisfied with how it looks. Here, I decided again to copy the individual shapes and I will place them on top to have this double layer effect. I decided to add another design and this is a grid one. So if you want to do it, go to the insert tab and choose the straight line. And here I will add it on my slide. So there is no exact number of lines that you should add. It depends on you. Select them all after adding the horizontal lines. Right click on them and choose the group option. And with that, you can move them by group without being stressed that some lines will be disorganized duplicate this group of lines and then rotate them to have the vertical lines then adjust them according to your liking you can also group them to have this grid pattern finally i will change its color to white and place it here in the corner i will then duplicate it and put it on the other side you can adjust the settings of it their transparency and thickness of the lines I will add here a text box where you can place the title of your presentation, then I change its font, font color, and style. I decided to add a shadow here and just make some more adjustments. I choose a darker shade for the shadow and a shade of yellow for the text. Next, I duplicated the text box and you can type the subtitle of your presentation or add your name here. I also changed the font and font size of the text. And here I'm just adding some more designs like some circles, lines, and a letter X design. By the way, I got this concept somewhere. I forgot the name but the designs, I made them myself. Again, be creative in designing your title page. You can show here your personality and stuff like that. I'm just adding some final touches. The next slide we will be designing is the table of contents. So I just added a slide again, insert the color palette, and then format the background by changing its color. So before I design the table of contents, I will duplicate this slide so that I will not go through this process all over again. Here I added a text box and placed the text table of contents then change its font, color, and size. I will then add this irregular shape. You can choose any shape you want. Then I just change its color. By double clicking on the shape, you can easily add a text. So I added here number one. So this will indicate each of the headers I will include on the slide. Then change the font style and color of the number. Next, instead of making another irregular shape, I just duplicated the previous one, then paste it here. And of course, adjust its size and color. So I'll just repeat this process. You can add as many as you can and depending on how many headers you will have. And if the slide is already full, you can add another one. After that, add a text box and in here, you can place the headers of each number or topic on your slide. I will just name this first header so that if you will use this template, you can easily place your header here. Again, repeat that to the other slide. 
You can also add some periods or leave it as it is. Then I'm just going to duplicate the shapes from the title page or slide of this presentation. Then adjust their color feel and outline. And I suggest that you do adjust their transparency. So I'm adding some more designs. I'm not gonna go through each of the shapes I added here on the slide. Their measurements and specific color because I want you to do your own version. So for the third slide, I will include the header title. I added a number to indicate them and the header text under it. I will also add some designs here. I'm still sticking to the vibe and overall theme of the PowerPoint. Reuse the shapes and colors from the previous slides so that you will have a cohesive PowerPoint presentation. You can repeat this process to each of your headers or topic to include in your slides. This is how it looks like as of the moment. So moving on to the other slide, you can add here the text or sentences you want to include under the header. You can duplicate this slide as many times as you want. I'm also gonna add here some more designs. Again, I'm duplicating the shapes I used from the previous slide. Also, I'm going to change the text's font color to this shade of brown, orange color. You can also add some more text boxes. It depends on you. For this part, you can add here the photos you want to include in your slide. Here, I just added a square shape where you can add your image. Then I will change the background. So instead of having a solid color, I will add a pattern. So just click on the pattern option. You can choose there your preferred pattern and then change its color. I will also copy and paste the shapes and designs I want to add to this slide. You can also add a text below to add a name or a description of the photo. For the next slide, I will show you an idea of how you can make a procedure slash an order pattern slide. So first, of course, add the title of that specific procedure or a step-by-step -step process. Then I will add a curve line and make it like the waves. An example is here in the video. Then adjust the thickness and color of the line depending on your preference. Next is to add a text box and place the text you want to include like the text steps 1, 2, 3 and so on and a short description. So I will be duplicating that text box. Again, if you will include a procedure in the slide, you can adjust the line and other text boxes if you're planning to use my template. Here in PowerPoint, you can also choose icons you want to include on your slides. So just search for it here. And after you're done searching for those specific icons, click on the insert button. And the nice thing here is you can change their color. You can use the eyedropper tool and pick a color from the palette. Here I am adjusting them, adding some more designs and also adjusting the shapes. Another slide is I will show you how to design slides with graphs. So here I just duplicated the slide and deleted the other elements I will not need in this one. So pick the graph you want to use. Here I just pick this pie graph. 
You can then change its color by choosing from their palette, but I'm not really a fan of it. So I will just choose the color I want from the ones I've previously used. Then I select the no line option for the border to have this seamless look, which I think looks so pretty. Then I will add more irregular shapes to indicate the specific portion of the graphs. I will just change their color. You can use the eyedropper tool. Then here I added some more text box. I will be duplicating the shape and text box. Then you can adjust them until you're satisfied with how it looks. I also added a text box on the pie graph to indicate the percentage of each portion. For our second to the last slide, I will add this PowerPoint slide where you can add additional notes or any code. I will still be using this irregular shape and then add a text box inside it. I will add some more shapes in here and then I'm going to adjust them. For the last slide, I will place here a thank you text. I'm going to apply two different fonts. I will adjust the transparency of the other text. So I added another text box where you can place your contact details like your email or name. You can also add an icon to add more designs on this slide. I didn't include shapes here because I want it to be simple, but you can add some on your own PowerPoint presentation. Here I will show you how you can add a hyperlink to any elements on your slide. The first is to click on a shape or text you want to apply the hyperlink, right click on it, and then choose the hyperlink option. Click the place in this document menu, then select a slide you want to link that specific element. Since this is number one, I will link this shape to the slide where the first header is located. Then just click OK. Repeat the process to the other parts of your slide. So this is also optional. It depends on you on how you would set this up or design it. This is how my PowerPoint slides look like as of the moment and here is its full view. Also, I included here the fonts and the color palette I used in this PowerPoint and credits the owner of the palette. So if you want to download my template, click on the link below in the description box. And once you opened it, it will show you a folder of some of the fonts I used and I didn't include the other fonts because I think they are already included in the PowerPoint. But if you don't have some of the fonts I used, you can search them on the internet and download them. Just be aware of the websites where you will download the font. Usually, I download my font on fontspace.com. I will also put the link of it below if you want to check it out. If you want to have your own copy, click on the file tab. Click the make a copy option, then click on the entire presentation. You can rename it with whatever you want since this will be your own copy. And you can choose a folder on your Google Drive where you want to save it. After that, click the OK button. And yes, that is all for today's video guys. If you want to try out eDrawMax for free, I have the links below in the description box. Also, they have a back to school campaign where you can avail the software at a discount. And lastly, thank you for the support. We just reached 50,000 subscribers. And yes, that is all. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed this one. So if you did, give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe if you want to subscribe. And yes, that is all. Thank you so much guys for watching and see you on my next video. Bye guys!